Okay, hi everyone. I'm at First Line Tennis Academy in Germany, and uh, this is Robert Lopez. He's head coach at First Line Tennis Academy, and he's one of the best coaches in the world. Hi everybody. Um, so, um, to introduce a little bit, he had the number one player junior in the world. Yes. Yes. Marto Fuchkovic, he won like 2010, was it? Wimbledon Championship. Then he had uh, some players in top 100, Simon Broil, he was 55 in the world, ATP, and almost passing Mito was in top 100 also. So, can you tell me, because my players, I think they really want to know how to get in top 100 in the world. First of all, the bad news, it's very difficult. Okay. <laughs> because there's just 100 guys there, just room for 100 guys. So, uh, everybody who wants to get there should be aware that uh, you have to make something special to get there. Okay. For example, in practice. So, um, if you just practice normal like all the other guys, the chances to get there are very low. So, if you watch the best players, they make the best practice. And it's, it's more about practice than it's about talent. So, the key, in my opinion, the key to become a success in tennis is just simply work better than the others, if you can. <laughs> okay, okay, so you heard it. And uh, now uh, let's uh, talk about deep practice. Okay, that's let's try to explain to uh, not just my players, to other players also, what is it, deep practice? So I call it deep practice or perfect practice. I mean, it's, it's, it makes a big difference if you just practice or if you make perfect practice or deep practice. Mm -hmm. What does deep practice mean? Deep practice mean you always, when you do something, you have a purpose. You don't just hit a, a yellow tennis ball to the other side of the court. You have a target. You exactly want to know where you want to put it, how you want to put it there, with how much spin, with how much depth. And uh, so you have that purpose. You move to the ball, for example, it's very important that you move very good in practice. I see a lot of players standing in the corner hitting cross court to the other side, not moving at all. This doesn't happen in a match. So, uh, the, the world-class players, they move like they move in a match. So, um, it's not just standing in the corner and hitting. And then you have a purpose, you know, I want to put the ball there, exactly there. Okay, then you hit the ball, and then you, that's the most important thing, you check your result. Was it exactly what you intended to do? Or was the ball short, or was it out? If it's out or short, you change. So you give yourself some feedback and then you change. Okay? So, and, and when you watch the best players, they always adjust. You will never see a world-class player playing twice to the service line. He plays to the service line, it's not good, he recognizes it, he gives himself this. It's, it's very important that the feedback is sober, so no, no bad emotions. It's like, it's like, aha, I see it's not there, okay, the next one has to be longer. And then they, you will see, immediately you will see a change. It won't be the same. And when I watch, like, let's say, club players or not as good players, they play three or four times to the service line. And then I say, okay, where's your purpose? Where's your focus? The good players, you know, they have a lot of focus. They know what they want to do, and, and they, they adjust all the time. And this is, to me, that's what good practice is all about. And one more thing is, to me, is very important. It's effort. It's not just, you know, you have to try to make it perfect all the time. If you watch the best players practice, they really try to make it perfect all the time. They play, and it's also physical effort. You know, if you watch Mr. Ferrer practice, it's very, it's very hard to do better practice than him, physically see. So this, is, to me, is uh, the key. The key is, if you practice very good, better than the others, you have chances. But if you practice like the pack, you will play like the pack. Okay, okay, good. And uh, let's talk about one more thing, technique. I think in the world, all coaches in the world are telling just about technique. Many. Uh, many, uh, okay, many, sorry. So what do you think about it? And it is that a number one thing in the tennis? No, absolutely not. The number one thing in tennis is the, the mental side. This is number one. You can play, let's say, a very, 
it's a strange technique, but if you have a good, you know, confidence in your strokes, this is number one. Number one is confidence. You, you, you must believe in your strokes. You know, if you doubt in your strokes, you will miss. So, um, it's good to have a good technique, but the best technique doesn't help you when you don't have the confidence. So, to me, it's more important to have confidence and then to try to build the good technique. At the end, when you want to be, I don't know, top 20, you should have a perfect technique. But uh, you don't have to have a perfect technique to be number, I don't know, 35 in the world. I know some, some guys who play strange, but very successful because they believe. Okay. Very good to know. And uh, when we speak about some problems and uh, let's, let's say like these players and around players some problems existing, what would you say about it? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, the, the problem in tennis is there are as many experts in the, uh, in the tennis world like uh, uh, people. Everybody who, who can hold a racket and buy a, a bucket of balls is believing that he's a coach or an expert. Okay. And there's too, mu too much crazy talk, in, with, particularly uh, sometimes bet between coaches, but also the most important thing is between parents. Yeah. The problem is they don't have no idea what it's really all about. Yeah. This is important. They, they don't know nothing because they have no experience. Where, where could they get? If I have just one children, I have just one object to test. So I would recommend parents to look for experienced coaches, to ask for their advice, perhaps to look how they are working once or twice, and then give my child to the coach and say, okay, coach, this is my child. I'll give it to you, make the best out of him. So that would be my advice. Because parents, they, 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 they think they know, but they don't know. And how to recognize a good coach? A good coach, a good coach is a coach who's working, you know. For example, a good coach is a coach who's who's teaching modern tennis. How many coaches in the world are teaching tennis from 20 years ago with old myths and, and stuff? Tennis has changed a lot. And uh, if you play like 20 years ago, or if you teach like 20 years ago, your players won't have, have success at the, at the end. So. Uh, a good coach has to, to teach perfect technique. A good coach has to be motivated. You see, when, when you watch a lesson, you have to watch, is he motivated or is he just feeding balls like this and not, you know, not teaching. Many, many guys just play balls with the players and don't teach them. Um, so, and a good coach has a system. You know, he, he, he has some, some coaching tools where he can develop strokes, develop technique, develop tactics. This is also very important to me. I mean, uh, many coaches just coach technique and not tactics. And in my opinion, a good coach should also cover this mental side of the game. Very, very important. So many coaches don't teach tactics and they don't teach mental things. There are some tools you can, you can use to, to, uh, to teach mental toughness. And not many coaches know how to do that. So I would choose a coach who is also covering this. I would try to, and I would try to find out how does he deal with my son or daughter? Does he, is he like, you know, does he have a good relation? Is there some communication about, is there some, it's, it's like teamwork. It's not like I tell you what you have to do and then you have to make it. It's like we are both together in this and we, we, together we try to become better. But the number one thing for me, if I would choose a coach, I would always look for motivation. Is that guy motivated? For example, is he motivated to educate himself further? Mm -hmm. Or is he just, you know, remaining... I know coaches who have never read a book about tennis. And, uh, and this definitely is not good. I know coaches who don't go to seminars. I know coaches who... who they, they stop playing tennis and then they think, okay, now I'm a coach. No experience at all. And uh, to me that is... Uh, the problem of many coaches and you will just find a few who are different and you have to pick one of those then you then you and you don't have to look has he been the greatest player in the world no no you have to look is he a good coach 
and that's totally different. He doesn't have to be a great player. You know, he, he has to be a little sensitive. He has to see things, find out things. So it's good if uh, if the coach has some experience. That's uh, necessary. Okay. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. That's no, it. You're welcome. Okay.